Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Training Reviews. So I have the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. If you haven't seen my unboxing and first impressions video, then take a look over here. Right now I'm going to run through the top 10 nice tips and tricks, some new features that you probably don't know about that comes with the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. A lot of these are existing on some other brands such as OnePlus, Samsung, iPhone and so on. Some of them are not. So I thought it was worth mentioning some of the features that I think are the top 10 things worthy of knowing about that this phone comes with. I'm not going to run through some of the features that you're already aware of from the keynote, from the launch videos and so on. Things like the reverse wireless charging, the camera, the AI, the long battery life and those kind of things. I'm going to cover some of the more smaller things that no one's really talking about to make it especially useful for you guys that are maybe looking to switch to a Huawei phone and have never used Huawei before and aren't really sure what other features are really good with this phone other than just what you've seen online on the TV and so on. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so the first one is called Magazine Unlock. Now you just go into settings, you go into home and wallpaper, and then you have this option here at the top called Magazine Unlock. If you turn this on, then this cycles through various different wallpapers on your lock screen. So every time you turn the phone on and you look at the lock screen, it will be a different background wallpaper. Gives you a few categories here to show you what you'd like to see. So I can tick celebrities, for example, to have a cycle of celebrity photos as well. So if I go ahead and show you there, Every time I lock and unlock the phone, you'll see that it's a different picture. That is what is known as magazine unlock, and I think that's pretty cool. Right, so number two is the Dolby Atmos sound quality on this phone. So if you go back into settings, go to sounds, scroll down to Dolby Atmos, and then you have three options here. So by default, it's set to smart, which basically adjusts the audio and the sound quality of the speakers on the phone to match the videos that you're watching, maybe YouTube, maybe Netflix. But you can go and experiment with something like the authentic surround sound on the film option here or you can actually choose music and if you listen to some music maybe on spotify or something like that and uh, choose the type of equalizer you like to have in there i'm not sure if you're going to hear this clearly but i'll show you possibly a little bit of the difference in these three options so uh, smart i'm going to play a video of my previous youtube video Next, I'm going to choose the film one. Hey, what's going on? And lastly, I will choose music and I will leave it on rich and see how that sounds. Now, I think you might not be able to tell the difference maybe with the microphone here in my room, but try to experiment that with yourselves. It does change the, the noise a little bit, so I can tell subtle differences between film and music options here. So it's really good that they give you the option to choose the type of sound output you have. So that's really cool. Number three is the notification numbers. So depending on which phone you have, I know Samsung with their OS on top of their uh, stock one, they actually allow you to have the numbers over the applications. So it tells you how many messages you have unread. In some other phones, such as Huawei or Google Pixel, by default, you just have the notification icon, which is just a standard solid color over the app icons. So you don't really know how many unread messages you have. And there's an option here with the, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro that allows you to change that. So if you go into notification settings, go into more notification settings, and then notification method, you have the option to choose between icons and numbers. So by default, it was set to icons. I've switched it over to numbers. So now I'll be able to see the number of unread messages on the app icons itself. So, so for me, that's a really good option to have because I think that's what most people would prefer anyway. 
Number four, if you're using different applications with different accounts, such as Facebook, you maybe have one business account, you have maybe one personal account, you want to be able to switch quite easily between them. Yeah, you can actually do that. So if you go into app settings and then at the bottom here, you have app twin, for example, Facebook that is compatible with twin apps. Now you can log into two different applications for Facebook and you'll have two icons. So when you scroll down here, you can see Facebook 2 and Facebook 1. So essentially you'll be able to log in to different accounts using the same application, which has been duplicated. So pretty useful. Now the uh, Huawei Mate 20 Pro does have quite a large screen and some people are possibly used to using a smaller screen. So if you wanted to just use one hand to control everything you got on the screen there, then you can actually do that and it's quite simple. So you go into settings and go in the smart assistance. There's an option here called one handed UI then mini screen view. So if you tap that, there's two methods for you to do this and I use method number two where you have the navigation buttons along the bottom. Just swipe left or right amongst them to either move the whole UI smaller to the right hand side of the screen or to the left hand side of the screen. So here's an example. So I'll swipe to the left and there you go, it's done that. So you just tap outside of that and it will go back to full screen. If I, tap, if I swipe right, it will move it to the right and I can just play around with it from there. So it makes it easier, everything is in, in view. Right, so the next one is a scrolling screenshot. Now this is available in some other phones as well, but I'd like to show you how it's done here on the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. If you hold the volume down and power buttons together to take the screenshot, you'll see a little preview. If you swipe that preview down, it will start taking a scrolling screenshot of the page. As you can see, there's nothing here. So I will go and open the browser and do the same thing again. So I will swipe that down and it will start scrolling the screen and taking a screenshot. So if I tap anywhere, it will stop and it would have showed me the entire screenshot of there, which has been saved to my gallery. So it's a, a really cool and funky way to take a screenshot of an entire page. And it's a little bit less clunkier than I've seen on things like the OnePlus 6, for example. Number seven, it's not so much as a feature as it is just an app that Huawei have created. It's called Mirror. So you know how sometimes you just wanna check if you've maybe got something in your teeth, you open up your camera and you're trying to look clearly. And sometimes it's not that clear. So they've created an app called Mirror. If you just open that up and you'll be able to see yourself. And what this does is basically it creates a little mirror frame where it uses the selfie camera. And the only difference is, is that it's just put the brightness really high so it's easier for you to see yourself. So the only difference between this and actually using a camera is that it just opens up with full brightness on this as well. So you can adjust it. So I did put it down. I've got brightness at 100%. And if I'm looking around, I can see, use a mirror and that's about it. When I close it, the brightness goes back to your default brightness. The only difference between this and the other one is that it just increases the brightness for you. Otherwise you can simply just open up the selfie camera, put the brightness up manually and it's the exact same thing. But nonetheless, it's worth mentioning. Number eight is something called splash edit. So if you've taken a picture, you can actually just highlight a certain color in the picture and all of the items that are the same color in that picture will be notified and then everything else will be monochrome and black and white. So if you go into edit, for example, I can click this option at the bottom called splash. And all I do is select a part of the uh, picture that I'd like to highlight. So I've selected the sky, which is blue. So all different shades of that same blue in the picture has been highlighted and everything else is black and white. But of course you can do this and make some really good pictures with like people in uh, wearing red clothes and highlighting specific colors that stand out more than anything else. And then you can get some really good shots doing that. So, so the Mate 20 Pro comes with a infrared port at the top there. So obviously you can control stuff with that. So they've got an app here called Smart Remote. Now, if you open up that, I've connected this with my Samsung TV downstairs. Now it's really convenient. You can just find any type of brand of, of hardware or of applications and connect with it and to see if the infrared works. If it doesn't, then it gives you options to cycle through different various database versions of that product. So I can now turn the TV on and off using this. I've uh, adjusted the volumes. It is working on my TV, um, but sometimes it is very buggy and it doesn't detect it. So there is a specific position you have to be, maybe the distance from the TV, the angle that you point it out. So it's not perfect, but I think it's getting there on the right track and maybe with future software updates, this can be a really good feature to have. And last but not least is a feature on the camera here called underwater. So if I go to, into the more menu, just there on the right hand side there at the bottom, you see underwater. Now essentially, if you're gonna be taking your phone in a swimming pool into the ocean on holiday, 
It's recommended to have it in a, in a waterproof case, not just on its own like this, but put it in a waterproof case where you can still access the buttons. And what this is telling you is that the video button is for the volume up, the photo button is the volume down, and the screen on and off is there. So that gives it a little bit easier for you to control what you can do with the camera. In other phones, when you do have a waterproof case on it, you have to try to really press the buttons in the screen, which makes it a little bit difficult because it's very wet and slippery and sometimes it doesn't detect it properly and you have to really press hard. But here it's basically utilizing the side buttons to take the videos and photos when you're underwater. So it just makes it so much easier. And when you want to exit, you just basically hold the button there at the bottom and it will come out. So really convenient way of taking pictures underwater there. So that's about it guys, those are my top 10 uh, little features that I think is worth mentioning about the Huawei Mate 20 Pro which I think you probably wouldn't have heard of. If there's any others that you think are worth mentioning then leave a comment below, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise I'd love for you to hit that like button, make sure you subscribe, I've got a camera comparison and full review of this Huawei Mate 20 coming up very soon and I think you'll like that. I've got more reviews of the OnePlus 6T and the Pixel 3 coming up very soon as well. And if you have any other questions or there's anything else you'd like me to review on this phone specifically, then also let me know as well. Otherwise, I'll be taking a few pictures, putting them on my Instagram at Trending Reviews. Take a look and I hope you follow me there. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Take care.